Everyone, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to Dreamers Game 1, where we are playing Yomi. This is turn 96, and it should be the last turn of the game. So, um, we're just going to go through things like we normally do, because why not? Uh, at the top of the turn... I forgot this even happened. I don't even have this on my list. Um, at the top of the turn, we have uh, some research. Uh, Evocation 9. Yay. Fantastic. Uh, it's it has come too late, but had we uh, actually I say had we had it, um, I don't think evocation nine would have mattered against what we are up against right now because uh, we only would have been able to cast it like once, maybe twice if we really tried. Uh, and one or two bombardments against an Ubar army of mostly Shiatans is not going to do anything, so... <laughs> um, so I don't think that would have mattered, but is what it is, right? Um, okay, next up we have a throne claimed. It is the throne of the moon. Boom. Claimed in the name of Ubar. And uh, that's going to be the last throne required for Ubar to win the game. So unless something else has happened, which I don't like, I've been trying to, to talk to people here or there, etc, etc. There's a reason why I called the game at turn 94. is because at that point, it, it was like, everyone was like, yeah, no, we can't do anything. <laughs> so, so I, I don't expect anything to happen. But if it does happen, that'd be cool. Um... All right, moving on. We've got some manifestations. Let's uh, let's go ahead and see how this goes. We, you know, we're poking at Ubar, trying to see if we can maybe snipe some things. Uh, we've got a Shaitan over here. Very nice. Uh, this is one of the lifelong protection Ring of Returning Star of Thraldom versions. So let's see. And I've I've actually been kind of ever since we've been seeing these right appear in um. Uh, uh, in the battles against Helheim, I've been curious, right? Like, can we manifestation these, right? Will that even work? Um, so, let's let's see how it goes. All right, we've got false horror that's going to come up. Um, at this point, though, this is this is kind of an interesting scenario, right? Because like. The bang goes up immediately. The false horror is going to go up immediately, or blink, basically, immediately. The uh, imps, the first wave of imps are going to go up immediately. And they're kind of going to, like, two ships passing in the night each other. The bane drops, kills an imp immediately. The uh, uh, imps and the, uh, the horror come back, right? More imps. Kind of a wet noodle fight going on right now. We've got 18 attack versus 9 defense. Oh, oh, we've got a morale break already. That's funny. That seems unlikely to happen, too. The Bane just went up to reposition. Ubar has routed. Ubar routed off of the fear. I don't think that's very likely, honestly. Like, a 17 morale... A 17 morale Shaitan shouldn't route from a fear aura easily. I mean, it should happen on the occasion, probably like, I don't know, one in eight or something like that. Cause it's not, it's not crazy high morale, but it is, you know, high-ish. So that does, that seems lucky to me. That does not seem like that is something that we should be able to get away with very frequently. Um, so that's kind of interesting. I think let's pop back into this real quick. Let's watch. Let's watch this battle one more time. Just, I mean, because we've got not a lot else to do, so we might as well really like um, theorize on stuff. So this guy's got twenty three protection and twenty six health, right? Um, this Ashen Angel on a thirty damage Bane Blade would have to hit really hard it would have to be a really high roll to kill this shaitan in a single hit right i don't 
I don't see that happening frequently. So much more likely is is that they get Ring of Returning. The only thing that I would say is is I don't know if um, if it would matter for the actual like decay effect because I know sometimes if you if you route with decay on you, um, it can still kill you. I believe right because it it'll still do like. 20 ticks or whatever and it'll it'll sometimes i think kill you on the retreat like i i want to say if you run with decay on it does the same thing as the battle timing out or or as the battle ending rather and you get 20 more turns of ticks or something like that uh same thing with like poison i believe so i think it can kill you in that scenario but i don't know if that works the same with the ring of returning right so if you get hit with a poison or a decay or something like that, and you returning, right, does that just immediately wipe all effects off of you? Or do you still go through the motions of do all the, 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 the decay ticks? If that's the case, then maybe we could pop a shaitan that way. Um, but even then, and that kind of goes back to that secondary scenario of decay. I thought you only took decay if, or damage from decay if you... Um, went over your maybe it's not max age I think it's I think it's if you hit old age so I wonder what old age is for these guys because max age is not the same as old age I don't believe so that's an interesting little scenario um, I don't I think I think manifestation probably should lose this more often than not right the star of thraldom is going to hit I say lose this I think I think what it likely is, is Manifestation is likely to pop the Ring of Returning more often than not. You're going to get a couple of routes from Fear. Super rare. Or not super rare, but relatively rare. Uh, you're going to pop a couple of Shaitans here or there and send them back with their Rings of Returning. And then, other than that, the, the Shaitan imps, whatever, will occasionally kill off the ashen angel i think is the route so i'd probably put it like if you're doing like out of 10 probably do like a 20 percent of the time you might route one from the fear um it with that given setup probably uh i don't know 50 to 60 percent of the time you're gonna you're gonna pop you're gonna hit it and it's gonna uh, it's gonna flee right um, and then, you know, 20, 20, 10 to 20% of the time, the, the Shaitan's going to kill the Ashen Angel. I think, I guess, I don't know. Those probably, those statistics are probably wildly off. Um, but I think most of the time we pop the Ring of Returning, the Shaitan goes away. Um, some of the times we'll get a kill from a route. Sometimes the Shaitan will defend itself. And I guess super rare would be we get a really high rolled hit that actually kills the Shaitan through its protection. But I, I don't think that's I don't think that's gonna happen frequently. And the the other side of things is manifestation targeting a particular province, right, with just one or two commanders in it, is a low chance of picking that commander compared to just coming back on the caster. So I don't think Manifestation is probably the way that we would want to go with that. Um, I do think it's interesting, though. So. All right. Um, okay. Very, very lackadaisical target here. What? How, what the fuck? Ooh. Why is this guy here? What? Huh? What the hell? All I can think is is that this is really strange. I don't know where this shaman came from. Um, maybe this is we could check. Maybe this is a mercenary, but I wouldn't think so. I, perhaps the I mean this could have been a, a shaman that got teleported in but then um, he gave the gear to somebody else that would be a little strange but it's entirely possible right um, either way oh I say that but like um, he uh he's owned this is this is the turn after he would have owned the province so he could easily have brought something in 
gate gateway or teleported it in initially as part of the uh, attacking force. And now that he's been there, he's probably just dumped that gear back into his um, into his inventory. So, um, okay. Anyways, manifestation. Uh, we get two wins and zero losses this turn. I think manifestation is actually. Um, I think it's actually very strong, especially mid to late game. If you have a a large death income, um, it does take. Right, it, it is, it's not difficult to cast, but it does take a high-ish death caster. But it's got a pretty good success rate. Um, that Bane Blade can be surprisingly effective even against certain thugs. And I, I don't know, it's, it does, it seems rel unlike something like Earth Attack, right? Um, Earth Attack, I think, is five Earth instead of four death. I think the four death is more valuable, potentially, right, in, in the late game. But, I don't know, it just feels like it's more successful. Um, and it also feels like it, I, I don't know, more worthwhile, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Um, someone probably has good statistics on remote success chances and things like that out there. But I kind of I kind of rate Manifestation relatively highly. Every time I see Manifestation spam happen, it seems pretty good. Every time... Um, Every time I've done manifestation, it's it's almost always been like, okay, yeah, this is relatively profitable and and achievable, right? So, uh, anyways, we've got some horrors, of course, attacking immediately after that. We've got six belly maw horrors from this manifestation, um, and that's probably a dead uh, lich. Uh, we do have a ring of returning on in here, just because we were like, eh, we don't want to lose this if we can avoid it, so... We'll see. Um, liches are normally good in assassination scenarios because of, you know, hordes of skeletons and, you know, uh, drain life and things like that. Vortex of unlife spam, really. But in this particular situation, there's no way this lich is going to stand up to this many of them. But he does just get plinked um, from a weakness tentacle, which means he just returns back. And that is all good. So... Um, as far as horrors go, one win, zero losses. Really? Um, we've got some blood hunting. A uh, total of 24 blood slaves for the turn. Easy peasy. And now we get into the actual, like, interesting stuff. So, um, we attacked... Ubar in two locations, Feral Woods and Light Hills, both of which are thrones. There's no even if we won, we are we can't prevent Ubar from from victory like this. Um, so what all we're trying to do is see if we can have a fun fight. I think we're outmatched in both fights. Um, oh, actually, we we also got uh, we got magic phased in Wase. Um, so we'll we'll watch that first, but. Um, well, well, we'll watch the Feral Woods one first, and then we'll watch Wase and Light Hills. Um, I don't expect us to win in any of them. I expect us to be matched out, outmatched in all of them. Um, I especially expect us to be outmatched in Feral Woods. We just didn't have enough in the area to throw together a good force. That's why that's why the game was over at 94, right? Is because the force that hit Feral Woods was so strong compared to anything that I could send at it, even even teleporting, even cloud trapezing, everything that I could throw at it that turn just would not have mattered in any way, shape, form, or fashion. So two turns later, we're trying to make a little bit of a go at it. Um, I don't even know if... Uh, I say I don't know. Um, I Ubar knows that they have won as well, right? So I think Ubar is going to give battle just to have some fun final battles. I think that's the intention, right? So we'll see how it goes. All right, Feral Woods, here we here we go. All right, let's review our little composition. We do not have a lot going on. You know what I should have done here, and I, I really didn't do it, and it's partially because of how I had to arrange things, but I could have, I could have done it with a couple. Um, I forgot, I'd say forgot. 
I was being lazy, the game was over, I, I didn't expect anything to matter, but I could have given this more of a college try. Um, I should have, I should have, uh, established some, um, Soul Vortex communions, right? Uh, or Soul Vortex, uh, batteries, basically, with the Sea Trolls. Um, and what we do there is you take someone like an Onishugo or really a Vampire Lord, right? And you give them a bunch of Sea Troll bodyguards and you put them off to the side. You have them cast Soul Vortex. And then they can basically endlessly chain um, hordes of skeletons and things like that because the Soul Vortex will constantly suck uh, health and stamina from the Sea Trolls who will constantly regenerate... Especially if you can put mass regeneration up on them, which we don't have a, one of our fairy queens here, so we're not doing that. Um, but uh, that would have been neat. Instead, we have a pile of sea trolls here. Um, we have some Onishugo. We have a bunch of Dionis here, including a little shrunken boy, Junichi. Um, who do we have? We have Junichi. We have Yuki. Junichi's seen some, some stuff. I don't know about Yuki. Do we have any big names here? We have Tejo who's been around and about for a while. Ah, we have Akasada, our enormous strength champion. Uh, very cool, he's gonna die. <laughs> we have Manabu, been around for a little bit, I believe. We have Benjiro, Benjiro's been around for a while as well, so. Um, okay, we are up against, not a crazy amount, honestly, but I think this is going to be more than enough. The Great Eagles aren't really a, a big issue. They're big bags of hit points. Uh, they do take buffs relatively well uh, because they are big bags of hit points and they have multiple attacks, but they're also size 6, so they don't have a lot of attack density or anything like that. It doesn't really matter, though, because what we're up against is like 10 uh, health. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, <laughs> oh my goodness, 14, Yeah, 14 Shaitans with lifelong protections. Um, so that's 28 imps a turn. <laughs> and it's it's just not... We could probably not die to the imps, depending on whether or not they get Rush of Strength or, or um, you know, the demon version of it, right? Uh, we could probably survive that. Um, but adding in that... All of these shaitans are equipped with, you know, gate cleavers, moon blades, flesh eaters, etc. And they will move forward and just vaporize us with uh, evocations. That is that is all that's going to be necessary. Top it off, there's other stuff in here, right? Um, specifically, we've got uh, a relatively high-ish astral caster with plenty and nature with plenty of uh, nature and astral. And then we have a death caster in here. Probably Wailing Winds would be my assumption. Um, so not going to be a thing for us. So let's uh, just kind of see what goes on. We're going to slow motion this at least initially. Turn on our thing so we can see where people go. Bunch of mist forms coming out. Power of the Spheres coming out from their side. Very interesting. We just got thunderbolted. There's a life after death. I think that's ours coming up. Uh, the imps have started landing everywhere. This is, I think, I think part of the scenario is, is I don't think we're going to leave our side of the field. I think we're going to get drowned in imps. Um, and, and now we're going to get drowned in evocations, right? Pillars of fire, imps um, continuing to drop on us. Yeah, imps have taken care of all of the wolves. They're going to start flying up and coming at us. We've got a wailing winds. We've got a howl. Yeah, wailing winds, howl, all of these imps. Yeah, there's there's nothing that's going to happen here. Our, our Dione will probably last for quite a while. 
right? But there's nothing that they're going to do to win this battle, necessarily, right? Um, and once once they're surrounded and enough Shaitan are casting at them, that'll be done. Yeah, we, he's got enough Shaitan on advance and cast spells as they come in closer. Ooh, God, the shotguns. Flame eruptions. Yeah, my boys. Just annihilating the, the sea trolls that remain with those flame eruptions. That's funny. Because the imps are basically immune to that. Well, maybe not immune, but very resistant. Um, we've basically routed at this point. Not everyone's going to make it off the field, though, because there's so many imps, and imps are so... Look at all these freaking imps. That's crazy. Shaitan's in range, Bonds of Fire. Speed this up. Lightning. Pillars of Fire. Obliterated, obliterated. Yuki back here trying real hard. Enraged. So it's actually kind of an interesting situation. So the soul vortexes from the Dionys will actually keep them alive fairly well against the imps, right? Um, but it doesn't matter. Look, we've, we've got roughly 14 shaitans. I think he's got them. Yeah, he's got them all on advance and cast spells. So when, when they get close and they start focus firing, there's just nothing that's going to happen, right? Like, look at the amount of evocation that is deleting that square ah uh, yeah yeah and this is uh this is a force that is quite a bit smaller patrol it's funny we we got demolished there um and i expected to but this for this is a force that is smaller than what was originally there right um i believe i think there was maybe like 40 or 50 maybe 50 or 60 units I, i'd have to go back and check the turn but uh, i think there was a little bit more here i think what is patrolling to meet us or not patrolling but uh yeah you know trying to trying to give battle is um a little smaller i hope it's a little smaller because we just got destroyed although it probably didn't need to be smaller uh great eagles are so much seed strength and so are these shaitans especially the fact that you know they're 5.1 on their own but you throw a couple of gate cleavers in there, at, and they're at the 55 mark. It's kind of crazy. Very cool. Very strong. Um, it's interesting to see this type of force just annihilate. Um, and obviously, we didn't really have much going on here, but still. Very, very, very cool. Um, so that was Feral Woods. Let's see what happened in Wase. This is magic phasing our big stack that is on its way to uh silver halls or, or wherever we're going this guy um probably is just gym burning us right i don't even remember if i really worried about um putting on enough gems for things i was very casual about everything Do we have our own did we st <laughs> i don't i don't even know what happened there did we steal some of his imps i think we might have Oh, did we steal the Shaitan? Oh, hold up. Did we <laughs> did we enslave the Shaitan? I think we did. That's funny. Enslaved mind. Yeah. That's the first thing our uh, Emug, one of our golems did, was enslave mind. It, that's the little um little bolt of like silver Oop, right there that that's right there we got him with another enslaved mind absolutely that's funny wow <laughs> yoink 
Oh, the the unfortunate part about Enslaved Mind versus Charm is Enslaved Mind turns it into a base unit, whereas Charm leaves it as a commander or whatever it was. So hitting him with Enslaved Mind is funny, but also not super useful. <laughs> I mean, technically, right, like you can Gift of Reason or um, what is it? Uh, the Astral version is... Uh, I don't remember. There's an astral version that does the same thing as Gift of Reason, but you don't you don't get to keep all the gear, I think, when that happens. So Um Battle in Wase. We we gained a Shaitan, I guess. I don't know, actually. This does not this does not show that we we have like a uh, a minus one plus one scenario going on. So this battle report might not have been the what actually happened. Either way, this Shaitan, whether we enslaved the enslaved it or not, uh, it didn't it didn't really accomplish much. It just messed with our uh, killed a couple of or got a couple things killed by friendly fire. So it's kind of whatever. Um, okay, let's check Light Hill. So this this again, I don't expect to win, but this should be a much more comparable battle. This is actually a I think maybe a show of what we can do at this point in time. We should have all or most of the major buffs that we are going to be casting in this battle. Um, so that should be relatively interesting. And this is cool. This is exciting because it looks like it looks like Ubar has brought something at least comparable. So let's take a look at what we've got over here. There's a fair amount of chaff in the back, right? For catching catching things like uh mass flight right ghouls and ubar and desert warriors we've got a fair amount of vine ogres scattered about it looks like there's a lot of stuff on guard commander that's interesting right got a couple of auto spawned elementals whether they're air earth water fire etc etc that's also very neat um looks like we've got a fair amount of blood slaves here with a fair amount of shaitans. Jotun wolves. Interesting. A fair amount of water. Uh, crystal matrices. Another crystal matrix. Alright, so this is a bunch of stuff. Um, this is gonna... This looks like it's gonna have the same type of scenario we have as like every single battle magic that that might be a thing uh we've got plenty of battle magic of our own though so we're gonna have we're gonna i think you know we have basically all of the um mass regeneration i believe we're putting up army of lead uh we should have things like will of the fates we should have things like life after death uh, etc etc so let's uh let's just kind of do like a high level watch of this and see what happens so all right we've got a sabbath going on over here and looks like that was a, a divine blessing we've got a time stop from the sinocephalian shaman over there that's really cool um we've got a serpent's blessing up as well where's the shaman Shaman, 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 shaman. Time stop. Time stop. He's right here. Yeah, it's this guy that has the... How big's his communion? Number of communion slaves, 17. Really? It did not look like there were that many, but I guess... Oh. 17. Um, It's going to be all the Sabbaths. Oh, Oh wow, he had uh he has a lot of these he has a whole lot of these shaitans in here as Sabbath slaves. Um rather than just evocation casters. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Okay. So we got we've got a time stop up. What's happening with the time stop? Got a bunch of swarm just kind of flooding things. That's very interesting. More Sabbath Slave. More Sabbath Slave. Holy shit. 29 Communion Slaves? He just... Is he gonna... Is he gonna Master and Slave? Is that the plan? 
Uh, is that enough? That's all, still only a plus four. So plus four. He's only at seven. You need to be eight for Master and Slave, I think. Power of the Spheres. Here we go. That's that's totally it. That's absolutely it. He's going to Master and Slave. Uh, we're putting up our mass flight, I believe. Right? Isn't that us? That's our mass flight coming up. Warriors of Niflheim trying to get our buffs up. We got, oh, we got a storm cast. Oh, right as that's happening. Unfortunate for us. Okay, really? Is this is this guy gonna do master and slave? He's gotta right. Army of lead goes off. Oh no, I'm preparing to cast Army of Lead. So this is going to be bad. We're we're not going to have uh we're not going to have anti magic up before Master and Slave comes out. We're preparing to cast He is Master and Slave prepares to cast. Is our Army of Lead going to go off before his Master and Slave? Uh we've got our Will of the Fates. Demon cleansing, mass regeneration. Power of the spheres. Serpent's blessing. Fanaticism. Ooh, someone's Meliath. <gasps> Meliath's cast spell casting was interrupted. He got hit? By some of the Aka Oni's throw flames. Oh my goodness. How how bullshit is that? We still don't have it up. I bet he was gonna I we just cast Army of Lead. I bet he was gonna beat us. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Okay, what do we have up? We have Demon Cleansing up on their side, which is going to destroy us. We have Natural Storm. We have Light in the Northern Star. We've got Relief. Um, we've got, I think, most of our buffs up now. We've got our um, Army of Lead. We've got most of our little um, resistances. We've got our Mass Regeneration. We've got Will of the Fates. We've got Mass Flight, though we can't use it. Um, interesting. What, what just went out? Is that our Serpent's Blessing? That might have been our Serpent's Blessing. That is so crazy to me. That's super funny to, to see that... Um, that's, that Shaman got interrupted. Did he die? Did he burn to death? Oh, shit. Um... Did he did he burn to death? Meliath. No. He did not. I've just lost him. Did he run did he run? Oh! Holy shit, we actually did get some um some Ko Oni behind them. From the before the natural storm went off. That's funny. That's interesting. Where's the sky? Is that him? I have lost this shaman. Just so many bodies. Yep, Queen of Air back here. No, this is just a sylph. Okay. So. Got some fun stuff going on here. I don't... I don't know that we're going to win. I think... Um, I think... Honestly, demon cleansing here just kind of trumps the situation. Uh, there's a fog warriors out from his side. Uh, we don't have our own fog warriors. Kind of moving forward. Um, these Ko-Oni on the back line are at the very least causing a lot of distraction. Right? 
Mist of Deception comes out. Oh no. With with Hal and Mist of Deception, that's gonna be so much confusion on our side. That's gonna be that's gonna be a big pain in the butt to try to deal with. We've got way more bodies on the field, but I don't know that it matters because of sh evocations like that, right? Like I think I think he can just blast through us. Those Kooni are distracting the shit out of him in the back, though. If we could just get through this front scenario, we might actually have some stuff. Do we have our own Howl up? I mean, we must. We have wolves coming in, right? Oh, oh. oh, we've got Disintegrates going out. Nice. We really need to break through this front force before all of these Kooni die. Because otherwise, we're... We're screw Ooh, gifts from heaven coming down. Oh, shit. We should have had our people on advance and cast spells. That's a problem right now. Ugh, because if we had more of that coming in, that'd be real good. Shadow Blast would be amazing. Or just having our people in range to start disintegrating. Right, like I just saw a disintegrate zap out at, at something over here. Um, That would be really good. Kooni are almost all dead in the backfield now. We've got a little group that actually kind of like made it in. That's kind of funny. Most of our... Oh, I say that. We've got a fair amount of Kuro Oni and um, just straight Onis still alive. Sitting around doing stuff. I don't have enough attack rear here, it feels like. Shouldn't speed this up. Kind of at that phase where it's just waiting for something to give. I think they've got this, though. I think the front line that they have put together is is holding strong. I sh uh, me not being on advance and cast spells is keeping me out of the range of everything. Not doing something like rigor mortis, which I thought we had planned to do. Um, that might have been a different individual, though. That might have been the guy at uh, Fellwoods, right? But yeah, we're totally, we're totally losing this. We're starting to be overrun by Mist of Deception and Hal. We've got a lot of undead around, but yeah, we just weren't able to push through things, push through their um, their chaff line, their elementals, their swarm spam, uh, all the rest of that. So that was a very interesting fight. I'm I'm <laughs> I, I feel like the funnest or, or the most interesting part was the fact that the uh, shaman who was obviously leading up, uh, not obviously leading up to, we saw him prepare to cast Master and Slave, got, just got hit by a, a Ko-Oni's or an Aka-Oni's um, throw flames and then just disappeared. I think probably, um, probably for... I mean, there's a lot of things that uh, made Ubar win this fight, but um, the combination of a lot of chaff plus Howl and Mists of Deception, we did not, we didn't drop anything battle evocation wise, right? If we had dropped something like a Firestorm, that would be a very different matter, I think. Um, and then the other thing I think, because not having 
foul vapors, not having uh, firestorm, not having uh, wrathful skies, not having any of that means we just didn't have enough to really chew through the the fat there. And the reason why we didn't have enough to chew through the fat was the combination, basically, of, of fog warriors, right? Um, our our respawn does not deal with fog warriors very well, right? So we have to have some way to deal with that. And then adding on top the demon cleansing, meaning that they could actually hurt our demons... Whereas otherwise, normally, without demon cleansing, it would have been very difficult for them to really do much to the demon, the demon front line. Um, I say, but probably most of what they did was uh, damage via um, magic, and that actually doesn't do anything with demon cleansing. Regardless, though, that was really cool. That was a fun, fun fight to watch. Yatta! All right, let's see what the butcher's toll is there. <laughs> oh my goodness, the crazy amount. Yeah, we barely did anything, and most of what we did was to, you know, nothing, right? Uh, they didn't lose any of their important stuff. We lost quite a bit of ours. Three vampire lords, very replaceable. Two neminaries, whatever, we don't care. Two liches, very replaceable. The golem, big loss. Uh, Demon general, not a big loss. Uh, we actually didn't lose much else there, so that's kind of fun. But we lost basically all of the chaff that we brought. Um, over half our Aka Onis, almost half our Ko Onis, almost all of our corpse constructs, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, they, we killed a lot. Um, like, looking at our numbers, we killed a bunch. But it was all chaff, right? It was all wolves and illusions and insects, etc., etc. If we had brought any sort of battlefield evocation, um, wrathful skies, firestorm, foul vapors, any of those types of things, we probably would have been far better off. Um, maybe not uh, foul vapors. I did see serpent's blessing go up. Um, I didn't really check for... Let's check for um, resistances and things like that real quick. Bloop. 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 Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay, everything should be up by now. Um, we got five fire resistance. We got no shock resistance. Um... I mean, the Shaytans obviously had built-in shock resistance, but none of that type of stuff. Um, what's the Grip of Winter? Might have actually been a really good play here. Uh, and then, honestly, like, I think the biggest play here is is the fact that I... I mean, Grip of Winter is, is the other scenario, but I should have had Rigor Mortis here, right? Um, I, if I had had Rigor Mortis here or and or Grip of Winter... I think the vast majority of this army is fatigued out pretty pretty early. Uh, he's got a fair amount of elementals, but I have more undead than he has elementals. The elementals will probably go down to the undead um, eventually, and then I think everything else just dies, right? Um, so, and and here's the thing: I absolutely had the ability to do that. I just didn't script it, so that is entirely my own fault. Uh, probably would have been the way to go. Oh, he does... I say that. He does have relief up, though. Um, so... Relief... I don't think relief is a perfect counter to Rigor Mortis, right? Like, I find, generally speaking, right, if you... If you have... Because part of the... Part of the problem is, is, is... You fatigue out anyways, right? Just in a battle, casting spells, attacking you're going to fatigue out. So, relief is meant to counter natural fatigue. So, if you are fatigued, fatiguing out, relief will generally make you fatigue-ish neutral, or, or it'll it'll take you a very, very long time to fatigue out for uh, attackers, right? Not uh, casters. Casters is going to be a very different thing. But Rigor Mortis is adding to that natural fatigue 
uh, whereas relief is trying to subtract from that natural fatigue. So I feel like generally speaking, right, the whole thing about rigor mortis is, is it's trying to get you to fatigue out faster. And then once you're fatigued, you're not going to become unfatigued, right? Um, so relief, I think, is for for general fighters. I don't think relief really helps that much versus rigor mortis. For casters, I think relief can help because it does, especially if you have reinvigor reinvigoration gear or a re reinvigoration bless, you can make it to where, you know, relief hits, you drop down below 100, you cast a spell, you go back up, uh, you get hit by rigor mortis, you go up a little bit more, relief hits, you go back down, you may or maybe, you know, right? It's that scenario of like relief can get you back into the game a little bit here or there, but I don't think it full counters, right? Like I've taught, I've heard people be like, oh yeah, if people throw up rigor mortis, you just throw up relief. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it works that way <laughs> necessarily, right? Because the, the thing relief if you're using it with the undead, right? Relief means extra fatigue for everyone else, no extra fatigue for the undead, right? Relief is trying to help, but it's not gonna fully help. I, I'm sure, I'm sure, again, you know, someone someone probably has the math out there to be like, actually, you're wrong, right? But um, from my experience, you can throw up relief and you can throw up rigor mortis. Uh, your, your, People, everyone's going to fatigue out anyways, right? It's just going to take them longer. Uh, I do think, I do think rigor mortis or, uh, or grip of winter or something like that would have been a good, uh, play here. Probably not grip of winter because I don't think it's cold, but, um, rigor mortis I think probably would have been a good play. This is just, this was a fun fight to watch. Where, did we, did we already see this guy? I want to see what happened to this shaman. Where the fuck did he go? All right, it's, it's this guy right here. Time stop. Power of the Spheres. Light of the Northern Star. And right there he gets hit. Where the fuck did he go? He like... Ran away. Did he... Does he have returning on? No. Okay, we're gonna get through and then we're gonna un... Quick. Alright, we're gonna watch. Very carefully. Okay, he gets hit. Okay. He's right here. He moved forward. Now he's right here. He got hit again. This poor guy. Oh, he's berserked. Okay, yeah, right. He Oh, he's berserked because he got hit. Right, so he's actively moving forward. That's funny, actually. All the way up here now. He just go get, he's got 32 protection. Absolutely. This motherfucker just goes and runs to the front lines and starts fighting. That's hilarious. That is absolutely hilarious. Um Yeah, I don't I don't this makes me this makes me not want to have my super high astral caster be <laughs> be able to go berserk <laughs> i don't i don't know that i like that because he totally could have turned around and and done some other stuff right but as it is he's probably just gonna stay stay berserking that's super funny 
Yeah, because he keeps taking chip damage every once in a while from evocations. You know? Regening it back up. <laughs> the, the fucking journey of this one shaman. My god. That's hilarious. That's that's absolutely hilarious. I love that. All right, anyways. Uh, yeah, so we got creamed both times. Kind of what we expected uh, that to, to be happening. Um, I'm going to go ahead and blaze through some events. Oh, um, battles versus Ubar. Um, one win, two losses. Because I guess technically we won in Wase. <laughs> that's technically, I suppose. We have some events. Why not? Um, bunch of rebirth events. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, we have a magic site that we found in Tapanete. Um, we'll look at that here in a little bit. Um, we've got some nature gems. We got uh, death gems in Scardian Vale. Um, so what this ended up being is uh, events for the turn. We had an earth and a astral income site. Uh, so earth and astral income plus one, uh, nature plus seven, and death plus six. So there's that. And we'll do the final scroll. Rejoice. A true god has ascended. So um, no tricks, no crazy reversals or anything like that. Ubar wins the day uh, and the world is revealed. So there were a couple things that were interesting that I wanted to point out. Um, and that is, is I do think some other stuff was happening. I just don't think it was successful. Uh, we can see over here in Druid land, right there. Uh, it is besieged by special monsters. Um, this could potentially be a couple of different things, but it could be horrors, right? Um, targeting this particular location, uh, didn't really mean anything, but it is what it is. Um, over here in Saramacia, that's happening as well. Um, so, uh, this is the final lay of the land. I'm going to do another video after this that's going to go through... I'm going to go all the way back through the history, and I'm going to talk about, um, you know, how the game went, and what was cool, what wasn't cool, blah, 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 blah. Um, but at the end of the day, we actually, you know, we were, we were relatively large. Uh, we were just behind the curve in research. I say behind the curve in research. I think at this point we had, we had everything that we really kind of needed, excepting that we didn't have the stuff from Thaumaturgy that we needed for things like, we had Gateway, but we weren't prepped to do anything with it. Um, and the alternative would have been uh, Stygian Paths, which uh, is Thaumaturgy 8. So we couldn't really do anything with that either. So um, having either of those prepped. So what I mean when I say we were behind the curve on research is, is we are where we needed to be now to start doing things. But we needed to be there 10 to 15 turns ago to start preparing for a lot of the things that we are encountering now. And technically, honestly, a lot of that stuff we were prepared, we were there on. I was just playing very fast and loose at this point and not respecting what other people's capabilities were, honestly. Uh, 100% this, I think, I, I, I think at the end of the day, Ubar and Lanka both are better late game nations than Yomi. So I think I was kind of like outgunned, period. But I did not do nearly what I could have done to prepare for battles against Ubar and uh, Lanka. I kind of talked about this, a, you know, I think five, ten turns ago as we were still in the process of attacking Ermor. But. An interesting thing about Dominions for me is, is that a lot of the times, because these games are so long and they take, they take place over the course of months, right? You have so much going on in your life, it's hard to dedicate the amount of focus that you need to be on the top of your game at all times, at every turn, right? Some players do it. 
some players honestly do it and they're they're amazing players there we've got i mean if you've been in the community for a while you know certain players by name because uh they're feared or they're accomplished or something along those lines right probably a little bit of both um but Right, it takes a lot to do that. What happens more frequently is you have this ebb and flow of as things are heightened, right, people start to ratchet up what they are doing. And as things kind of like mellow, you know, you get complacent, that type of scenario. Very, very common situation. So it, I, I came into this game as a sub so I was very mellow going in. I was really expecting to get get thrashed, to, to not last very long and get knocked out. I was just doing my civic duty. Um, and then I kind of stuck around and got into a couple of wars and things, things were going relatively well. <laughs> Meaning there there were fewer of those moments where i felt that tension where i felt like i had to really pay attention and ratchet up the focus um so i i kind of skated through this game <laughs> um and it cost me at the end absolutely right like it got i got into that mentality of like oh we're we're doing stuff i'm prepping some things we're working on what we can blah 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 but i didn't do half of what i could have or should have done to try to prepare now i think against really good players which i think i think there were a handful of really good players in this lobby right i think ubar lanka helheim obviously stand out because of what they were able to accomplish in this game so very very good job right um i think even what i could have done against good players like them i probably still would have lost in the end but i could have put up way more of a defense that being said at the end of the day this game got to turn uh 96 so i'm not super displeased about the what I did in the first place. Um, so I was really not look. I think that might be another scenario is, is, is I was getting to the end of this as I was ending Tetragrammaton, which was close to turn 200, right? And I was the entire time we were approaching turn 100 of this game. I was like, I do not want another almost 200 turn game. <laughs> Please no. So I do actually think that I I might have been less willing to try hard <laughs> because of that situation. Um, anyways, this was a really fun game. I had a blast. Um, had some pretty interesting wars against Tenom, um, against Ermor. Uh, some interesting failures against Helheim when that kind of situation happened. And, and then now some interesting failures against uh, Ubar. So... That was some uh, some fun stuff. This is the second time I've actually played Yomi in multiplayer. Um, I'll probably talk more about that when we get to the, the full overview, the, which is going to be the next video that we do. Um, I think Yomi is cool, but I don't think they're the nation for me. Um, I, I'm a super not a big fan of the income malice. And while I think they've got some fun, interesting tricks, uh, I, I'm just not like... Woo! Yomi! Yeah, let's go! I think they're cool. I think they're a very neat thematic nation. I just don't think that I like playing them as much compared to some other nations. I do still think they're fun to play. Don't get me wrong. Um, I, but then again, I think almost any nation in Dominions is fun to play. So on that sliding scale, it's kind of a moot point, right, situation? Um, regardless, that is going to be it for this video. That's going to be it for not quite it for this game that's gonna be it for this video we will have one more video for this game um where we go through the history right um through uh uh shit um the playback turn by turn scenario right and um yeah we'll talk about all of the things that's uh happened from my memory and um, how I feel about Yomi and a bunch of different other things, and uh, it'll be a fun little recap. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.